Hi there, this is Kush. Welcome to this video. We're going to be quickly learning how to change the background color in Photoshop. It's very easy to do, but there are a lot of YouTube videos out there which can be a bit misleading because just within 60 seconds, they show you the entire process and then they leave you. And then what happens is when you actually try that same process on your own images, it doesn't really work. And the reason why those images are misleading is because a lot of times, the people who are making those tutorials, they have actually spent more time in hunting for a very convenient image where everything works seamlessly. But when you really try that with your own image, which is from the real world, things don't work that well, okay, or that smoothly. So I'm going to be giving you like a real life example from one of the studio shots of my own client here, okay. So he had actually asked me to change the background in this particular shot. So this will be a perfect example. So the what is the easy way and how do those people mislead you when it comes to quickly showing you. So if I was to just go to select and then hit subject, that's going to make a decent selection. This is these days, this is AI based. So it does a pretty good job and it's getting better. And then I can just again go to select and just hit inverse. That is just going to select the background. And then it's just a one click process to change the background color. For example, he had wanted a blue color. So then what I did was I can just go over, select the solid color adjustment function and I can just pick any blue color. Let's say this one, go slightly lighter shade, like something like this. And then of course we've lost the, the luminance levels because the light was not equal everywhere. So this kind of looks fake. So what you just have to do now is just change the blending mode of this particular layer to multiply. Once you do that, now this starts to look really nice. So if we see this and this, and you can change it to any color by double clicking on this adjustment function. I can make it lighter, I can change it to yellow, green, pink, anything that I want, okay? So this is fairly easy. The problem is this, okay? So let's just uh, go back to blue, something like this. Now, if I, at around 15%, it's, it looks fine. But the moment we start zooming in, you're going to start noticing the problems. And these are the problems that those tutorials don't really show you. But this is something that you will face in real life because in real life, the subjects are not always going to have convenient hard edges. For instance, the image is selected by a lot of people. The convenient image is, you can kind of think of it like this apple. It has hard edges all over. So something you know, just to show you what we did in this case, even if it's a portrait, but let's say the hair are not long or the person is bald, that can be a convenient image, right? Because then the edges are just hard. So we can now, if I was to just hit inverse and do this, this will be perfect. There'll be no issue with this if I just change the blending mode to multiply. So there are going to be very less amount of images where you can just do this and get away. Most of them especially in portraits, obviously, you're going to have these problems. So another step that you'll always have to do when you do this is that you will have to refine your selection. In fact, if you really want to learn the art of changing the background, you really have to get good with selections. And for that, the normal selections are not always going to work because of these complex edges. So you have to get inside and learn the select and mask tool, which is how you refine your selection. So here is my selection because this is a layer mask. So I can select this selection or just click on the layer mask. And now if I go to select and select and mask, this is where I can just refine these areas. And this is how the select and mask interface looks like. And now we'll be able to refine our photograph. So let's just zoom in. And you can see we are having that issue here. So all we have to do is just take the, either there are two ways out of this. We can take the refine edge brush tool and just start drawing an edge here. And wherever you start painting, we're basically telling Photoshop to refine those edges. That means it'll start filling up even these gaps that you see and just make it really, really smooth and nice. Or you can simply increase the radius slider, which automatically you're telling Photoshop to draw the edge around the entire selection. Okay, now before I do that, just want to tell you that if you're looking at Select and Mask for the first time, it can be a bit confusing. Okay, so don't worry about that. Towards the end of the video, I will be showing you one good resource to learn Select and Mask properly. But the point right now is that most of these selections in real life will require fine tuning. So in this case, let's just use the radius function. So if I just increase the radius function, you start to see that this gets refined. Okay. And what is happening here is, right now you can't see it, but if I hit this show edge button, let me just slightly zoom out. 
Okay, if I hit the show edge button, think of it like this, that Photoshop has actually taken this brush and it's just starting to draw this edge, but it's just doing that automatically. Okay, so this is much faster. And usually around the head, you would require slightly larger edges because the hair are coming out, right? So it needs more area to refine this. That's where you can hit this button which says Smart Radius. And the moment you do that, it's automatically going to recognize which is the area which is near the head. And it's just whenever you increase this radius slider, it's going to increase it more on the head part because it knows that's where the hair are. But near the body, when, where he's wearing his jacket, that usually won't require too much of width because that area is going to stay the same, right? You just need a little thin line to define that because there's nothing coming out there. So if I just was to slightly increase the radius here, you can see. Only thing is it shouldn't start going inside. We can just stop here. Maybe something like this should give us a good result. So I think that is fine. And now if we just uncheck this show edge button, it's almost done a way, way better job than what we had before. So if I just hit on, if I zoom in here, I just say show original, you can see what we started off with and it is just refining things. Now, just maybe we can slightly increase the edge or the radius more right now. It's 16 pixels. So I just want this also to go away. So maybe give it a slightly wider edge and think, yeah, now this looks much better, right? So if we compare this with the original, this looks better, but it should also not cause any other issues. So it's, it's a good practice when you use this tool to go through all the edges and just make sure that nothing is looking back, okay? And oftentimes, this is actually still an easy image, okay? Usually, if, for example, let's say if this was a female portrait and you had more stray hair, longer hair, that can sometimes even result in a scenario where you'll have to make a separate selection for the head and you'll have to make a separate selection for the body because both of them will require different settings here. Okay, now again, I don't, this is not a select and mask tutorial. The point that I want to make is that, you know, don't always go on those YouTube videos which just make everything look very easy. You will have to fine tune this a lot. But now that we have a much better selection, if I hit OK, this is now going to give us much better results because again, if we zoom in, this looks much better. Now I'm again free to change the color in any way that I want. Okay, so select green. And sometimes if you're not happy with the blending mode, you can also, you know, just play around with some other blending modes also, but do use blending modes so that the luminosity comes through. All right, so that's how you actually change the background. This is a skill that actually depends on your selection skills. And therefore, if you really want to get good with select and mask, something that is very, very important if you want to get good with selection is in Photoshop, then do check out my course, which is available via Udemy, which is called Master Selections in Photoshop. It's a very long course, six hour long course. It has 36 videos. And we really, really focus a lot on select and mask. You learn it from scratch because you really need to understand how those different tools work in order for you to master select and mask. But anyway, I hope this video helps you out.